Support for this podcast comes from The First One with DJ Khaled, a new podcast only available on Amazon Music. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Khaled, and this is The First One. I talk to the most iconic artists on the planet about songs that didn't change the game, but changed their life. We hear from all the A-list music stars like J Balvin, Nas, and Kelly Rowland, who tell their stories about their first hits that took them to being overlooked to being overbooked. Join me every Thursday only on Amazon Music. Let's get this show a going. Welcome to the Adventures of Danny and Mike. To my right, Mr. <laughs> Danny Tamberelli. It's a what a day. What is going on? Uh, you know, it's uh, Thanksgiving yep. Eve when most people are out getting hammered and puking on themselves because they don't want to go home and see their family. And to his right, Mr. Michael mm. C. Marona. This is the time when people fight on airplanes. I never know about that because I've never traveled for very far for for Thanksgiving. So. Even less far this year. And my name is Jeremy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our special guests for the entire episode. They have a 100% perfect rating right now for the documentary on Rotten Tomatoes. No pressure. I don't know if that's going to hold, but no pressure. It's Scott Bar- Barber and Adam Sweeney from the Orange Years documentary. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having is- us. We're excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for Gosh, that was a really That's probably the best intro that Jeremy's ever given <laughs> yeah, to any guest. I finally got amazing. it right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you guys have a perfect rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know how I would be nervous all day, every day. Yeah, I'd be hitting refresh constantly <laughs> yeah. on the browser. I may or may not have been doing that exact thing, but I, I don't want to admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like you hit on all the right uh, nostalgic heartstrings to make Rotten Tomatoes say, we belly up whatever whatever you guys put on there whatever's on film there <laughs> we just had to <laughs> get we had to make an agreement not to ever uh team up with Zack snyder i think is the way that we figured it out <laughs> no cuts so no other cut <laughs> that, that was it yeah he'll end up actually doing a uh, for hbo max he's gonna do a uh, a reboot of this though so it's gonna be wonderful <laughs> Snyder cut. What's that? It's Danny. You play me. It's called the lime. It's called the lime green news. <laughs> they're just like you know. There are two colors, kind of whichever one yeah, you like. Turn. You guys took the good one. Turns first. out everybody's mother's named Martha for some reason. So yeah. <laughs> this is the future that liberals want. <laughs> wow. It's true. Well, thank you so much for uh, for guesting and uh, coming on to talk about this. I've only seen the trailer so far. Uh, I know it's on video on demand as of as we speak, but uh, I am going to watch it and can't it, wait. And it would uh, be very unethical for you to give it a hundred. Um, well, a hundred to rotten now. tomatoes. I've if seen you them, I've seen met it them. Yet. Like I can't give them like a four out of five. I would be the one. You know what I mean. You would be the one. Just give them your give them your Venmo information. <laughs> what? And, and any and anything is possible. Is what I'm saying yeah. right here. You know? Is that how that? Why don't? Okay. Yeah, you know, I used to grease a guy who uh, was a Nielsen guy. To be like, oh, you should watch if you watch this show. My buddies, you know, it, it didn't work out so well. I tried to get Kurt Bronner's bunk to 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 finally go somewhere because what a great show that was. I like that show. Great. I don't care. What I, no, I was being serious. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. being serious. Yeah. And I meant it. You and, should you should have greased him with actual money then instead of monopoly right. money. Right, and well, that well, it wasn't actual money. It was it was you know uh, it was food related, really. But <laughs> yeah. whatever, it didn't work out. He said he said I couldn't watch it, and I said, well, that's that's tragic, and I want my money back for that Wendy's I got you. <laughs> you actually gave them like French fry it's, grease, and they were like, I don't think sir, this is a Wendy's. It's, it's it was those you know the the frosty coupons that they had. <laughs> that was just. I had a whole pack and they said they were good until 2019. And, you know, this is like five years ago now. So I thought maybe this is, would work out, but it didn't, it didn't work out. Did you guys ever watch? But I won't bring them to you guys. Yeah. I promise. That's the, the, his name. I won't, I won't mention him or bring anything up. Let's just say he's Dave Thomas <laughs> of Wendy's. He's dead, dude. No, uh, no hey, wonder I, his vote was ineffective. Problem, right. <laughs> 
I've done three Wendy's commercials in my tenure. Okay, so I, I respected the product. Did they like keep any shakes or anything? I I always thought that they would do something for me. Like by the third one, you know, I did one when I was like eight, one when I was like thirteen or fourteen, and I did one right after or like right before I went to college at like eighteen. So we can kind of watch you grow up in fast food through Wendy's commercials. Yeah, yeah specifically, it's kind of it's like learning. English from the Police Academy movies. I think that's the most American thing ever to watch someone grow up through <laughs> Wendy's yeah. commercials. How did how did uh, you grow up through fast food commercials? <laughs> that's true. Look, not many not many uh, people who immigrate here know how to use supersize properly. So we have to teach them. You know, there's a role well, for okay. every straw. It's true. I don't think I I have ever found one of those Wendy's commercials. Because we show a lot, we do a live show called Nostalgia Personified, and so we'll show these guys uh, their commercials from years past and basically make fun of them, uh, or that's my position. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we've ever seen a Wendy's commercial from you, have we? Mm. Yeah, you Wrestling should, buddies is one, in there. There's, there's one. Yeah. There's one that. There's one that pops up. That should have been in the documentary. The old... There you go. We messed up. Right? Well, you know what? That was the. Well, that was the other thing. Any child actor who was on Nickelodeon, they couldn't have commercials on on the network or they would get it would just blow everybody up. Oh, that's a good point. To, they had to keep it like on brand. Mm. No, he was little Pete. He's not some kid from a Wendy's commercial. He's not eating Zach a, the Lego man. He's eating a spicy chicken sandwich and sweating about it. <laughs> Is that what your commercial was about? You recall it now? No, it was, it was, it was the, the last one I can remember was about paying, uh, it was about like, okay, so I got a hundred bucks for rent. Got to pay rent. It was like me, like going over my bills and I was like a hundred dollars for rent. Sign me up. This one. That yeah. This like one is, this one is like just before ever. college. Oh, I, I, 10 bucks for the new screaming baby CD. I think that was, that's really, it really time stamps the, uh, the commercial what year i need uh, <laughs> totally 90s it's gotta be like it's gotta be like 2000 or 2001 oh. are you trying to look for it it's, 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 it's nothing uh, this is i thought this was content. young danny video no there's young ones too i i dude i did them all i've done Through mcdonald's i've done i think i even i think i even did a rallies commercial fries. you guys know about rallies down there so what is right? ra- what is rallies Oh, maybe it's, well, oh, it's not no, checkers. Is, it's not checkers. It's, it's, it's checkers and rallies. Okay, okay. Those are like the so same thing. Arb- you guys Arby's, have checkers down there. Arby's is Hardee's north of the Mason Dixon line. Okay, got it. okay. It's kind of like what is it? Carl's Jr. and what's the other one? Carl yeah. Jr. is old Carl and old and, Carl and exactly. old Carl. Carl yeah, and Carl yeah. <laughs> Mountain Mountain and Pacific time zones is Carl's Jr. Central and Eastern is old Carl. <laughs> old Carl. <laughs> <laughs> old Carl. Old Carl only serves roast beef, but with not enough gravy. That's right, actually their they, specialty. Okay, and okay. they call that the hot Carl. Hardy. It's, it's Hardy's. It's okay. Carl Jr. It's and Hardy's. Not okay. Oh right, right. Carl's. Mm-hmm. I and mean, they have the star. You know that from watching all the NASCAR. Yes, exactly. Because that's all we do in Texas is just pretty that's much it. NASCAR. They have, the and, they have the star in common. Oh no, no, I don't believe that. Queso, <laughs> the, queso, Didn't NASCAR. Carl Jr. Like they, they did all the like. Like really, like I don't want to say call it unsavory, but I remember like they did like the their thing was they were like we're gonna do all of the advertisements that just show women eating. Yeah, burgers. they had Paris yeah. Hilton. Yeah. 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 Very Hilton, racy, right? very racy ads with with sauce <laughs> dripping from places that nobody wants yeah. sauce to be dripping uh, from. Yeah, I don't know about you. Uh, Speak to yourself. You know. <laughs> sauce can drip from wherever it wants. Look, if it's too spicy, I'll you know it'll burn my skin yeah. a little bit. And Listen, I'll have a little red mark. As here. a former Macy's Macy's, as a former Wendy's <laughs> spokesmodel, I think you're <laughs> I think you're limited in what you can say here. Uh, no, I mean all of my uh, well, all of those conflicts of interest are, are long. Yeah, long imagine long. little Pete telling you, "Hey, it's I'm cool begging, to get hepatitis C." I'm, I'm actually <laughs> begging. I'm begging you to. I'm begging you, agency, give me a Wendy's commercial to do in my little home studio. <laughs> Just a radio spot, nothing big. 500, 600 plus 10%, a little back end. That'd be great. 
a little back end. That's just that'll be the name of the commercial. That's end. the name of the commercial because that's what you get when that's, you eat it. That, <laughs> a little back end. Yeah, that was good. the name of the Very campaign that Carl's Jr. did. Was yeah. a little back yeah. end. A little, little, little back end. end. It's got to be yeah. yeah. L I apostrophe yeah. L, not oh, little. Yes, little back end. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was my first. That was my first Dirty South MC name. Was little back end. <laughs> you opened up for for Ludacris. I remember that. It was good times. Good times. He saw this guy named Twista and was like, wow, he raps very fast. <laughs> I have um, I have like a New York uh, impatience, like a classic New York impatience. But I, I didn't really feel it, that it was that aggravated when we went to Texas. I, I didn't find myself like constantly looking at my watch and tapping my tapping my feet while people were talking. I feel like most people talk normal and uh, it's mostly in traffic that I get on impatient. Yeah. Yeah. The traffic's pretty bad here. Like depending on where you go, like the Austin traffic's bad, Houston traffic. I mean, maybe that's any mm-hmm. Metroplex or any, you know, but yeah, I get that completely. Well, those are, those are also cities that have been gaining a lot of people yeah. on the last decade. And tons of cars and tons of Subarus. Their, their, You're infrastructure, right. their infrastructure wasn't ready to handle it. All the Subaru related traffic is really jamming you up there in, in Austin. Yeah. Was that for ATX? Yes. Was it a TV ATX TV Fest? Was that the last time you guys were in yes, Texas? That's why we were that's why we're oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that the reason the reason we were there is because of you guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. Isn't that how that yes. happened? And didn't that was like a that was a cross pollination of of your documentary and, and the TV fest. Nickelodeon wanting to do their. You know, That's right. Yeah, do yeah, that. yeah. That was very cool. So thank you because the guys realized they we, owe their we, affinity we partied, for Topo Chico to the fellows <laughs> they're talking to. We partied. <laughs> we partied pretty hard in Austin. You guys, the first time we went to. Uh, we were on Congress, we and then so, we made yeah, our way we elsewhere. Are, yeah. Yes. We. Okay. We went to a cool little like uh, it was like a little park that had like four or five different uh, little trailers of yeah. food. Out yeah, there. like hello. Come we started right with by. Al Pastor. We started with Al Pastor tacos, and we went and we went from there. And That's then, great. Yeah, we went and from probably there. like hello cupcake, we the, and a couple places were over there. I think probably. Okay. I mean, once once we once we got into it, it I becomes don't a blur. Remember. We I just started it. going to different Did places. Y'all hang out? I, we, I, we ended up at the Continental yeah. oh, nice. watching, watching. So it was like a Howlin' Wolf like appreciation That's night. Awesome. It was great. So I, it was, it was wow. really, really, I got really busted great. for yeah. picking succulents. I was, uh, I was just, I was just, I was just picking, I was just picking up desert plants all over to like stuff them in my pocket. I'm just taking them back to New York. And that, I that panel to plant, had I like, plant them. it had like you guys and then Danny Cooksey and then some of the hey dude people. Did y'all hang out with? Were y'all mm-hmm. hanging out with the whole Nickelodeon crew or just? Uh, just kind of by yourself. Yeah, some of some of us went out. Some of us all went out. I'm trying to remember who it was. Actually, I think it was mostly like the the Nickelodeon staff. Okay. My buddy Josh was, Lay at the was, time was uh, like the was head Kel- writer for the Splat. And so- Kelly from uh, from Hey Dude is is that who was there? I'm, I'm, yes. I'm spacing. Am I spacing on the yes. name? Yeah, that that's correct. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was Kelly and, her and then David, David, Lasher. David Lasher. Yes. Who was hilarious? Yeah. Oh, that's right. And then Danny, Danny yeah. Cooksey, Danny <laughs> Cooksey from Salute Your Shorts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't say Budnick. Don't say Budnick. No, no, no. no, no. Don't you, say Budnick. No, no, it's okay. It's not the same as if they're, uh, uh, you're killing me smalls guy. You can't say you're killing me smalls to him because he'll beat you up. <laughs> I heard he beat somebody's ass in an airport. <laughs> he did. He did drunkenly. And then he got in trouble for it. Wow. Actually, my, uh, my old, my old manager, her son and I are good friends and they, he grew up in Jersey, uh, smalls and smalls. I don't even know your name. I'm sorry. What a, You're just what asking for a face punch. What a dick. It's okay. No, I'll wait for it. I'll wait for it. Um, did you ever get he, your ass uh, beat or no? No, 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 I didn't. But he went to school with him and my buddy Dennis, uh, said, you're killing me smalls to him. And that was like a, that was an in school fight that happened. So I'm only one degree of separation from one of Small's like big time like Dang. Raleigh fights. Anyway, that's just something I like to like you know talk about sometimes. You collect people's petunia your brush, photos. Your brush with graceness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm I've been brushed with greatness. <laughs> Great greatness for sure. They, well, I remember we went to we I went to a UT football game. I think it was last year, and a I don't know if he was there, but there was a group of the Sandlot kids that came for a reunion. The the actors and and they were all like about it. You know, like they came onto the field and everything and were like, yeah, like so pumped up. So 
I don't know. I, I want to call him by his name, but yeah, like he, the, the <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. The actor that would move on from, right. from playing smalls would do, like, I don't think he was there. I don't think he was there. Squints was there for sure. Are you saying, are you saying he left it all on the field? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he As did. A, the, pr- the real problem is as someone who is in the mighty ducks, there's like this, like you left it all on the ice. Like who's, we no, get it's it. like, who, what, who's, who's the, what's the better nineties, uh, you know, kids oh, sports yeah. movie. Is it mighty ducks or is it the sandlot? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's ladybugs. Wow. Yeah. I would actually, That's agree. Not bad. I would That's actually not bad. agree with you. I would agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Brand is right? lo- learn to love Vanessa Shaw. And Jonathan Brand is just, you know, legs for days in those short, <laughs> short umbrellas. <laughs> you get a point. It's true. <laughs> just legs for days. <laughs> Well, uh, not to change the subject completely, but I do want to talk about the documentary and how speaking you... Speaking of legs for yes, days, speaking of legs I think is how you do it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. good. That's a good yeah, segue. Yeah. The, uh, no, I just wanted to know because I, I know that it's been a, there's been a, a buzz about it for a long time. We've, we've done the podcast for a long time, and um, obviously I knew the guys were in it and a lot of other people. But I just wanted to sort of know uh, how you guys started it. What was the idea? Why did you do it? Yeah, so Scott and I have been friends uh since sixth grade uh we we knew of each other since fourth grade uh and uh we became one of the ways that we became friends is uh we we were in this thing called odyssey of the mind and we started hanging out and uh we uh we came from broken homes and we the way that we stayed friends because back then you didn't have social media so if you moved away right even if it was 30 minutes it was like you basically were in Siberia. Uh, yep. The ways that we stayed friends is that we would call each other and we would always watch Nickelodeon. And so it's uh, had, you know, like a lot of people had a really uh, personal and, uh, you know, effect and impact on our on our childhood as well as us just growing up. And so we had worked together before on doing some short documentaries for different jobs and we had written some scripts that we had sold off. Uh, and, you know, we had talked, you know, I mean, y'all know better than anyone else, right? Sometimes you try to work with certain directors, they get attached to a project, people move on, or there are certain things like with IP or whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. And so we got to the point where we said, you know, we want to take our destiny into our own hands. And one of the ways that we thought that we could do that in an affordable manner also is to shoot a documentary. And we were throwing around some ideas. We had had a, a couple of ideas about doing this like potential little festival and things like that. And we love Nickelodeon and we kept going back to Nickelodeon. Right. Uh, and, and we did some research and we were really surprised and kind of dumbfounded that it had never been mentioned. Right. Uh, you know, Scott's worked on uh, documentaries uh, as working on a documentary. I've been on two star Wars documentaries and, you know, the fact that no one had done Nickelodeon, we were like, that's, we, there's an audience for that, right? Yeah. So we went in, did our crowdfund. Uh, we're lucky and less toxic than the than the Star Wars uh, fan. <laughs> right. if, I, if I may, if I may say so. Sorry, you were going, you were going, no. you were going. No. And, and and you know that was really kind of the the start of it. You know, we started doing the homework, but we knew that we uh, and Scott can talk about this, but we wanted to make sure that there was actually a story beyond just nostalgia. Right. And, you know, that it wasn't empty calories. Uh, So we started doing some research. And that's whenever we uh, found out about the story of Geraldine Laybourne and her team. Uh, And Scott can speak on it more. Yeah, I mean, that's really uh, once we found out about the team kind of behind the scenes, you know, Geraldine Laybourne, Scott Webb and Sweeney, all those guys are like, oh, that's the that's the story. That's the through line. You know, that's how we can connect all these amazing shows that that people grew up with and actually make it a story um, that's 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 compelling that people will 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 find out new things that they didn't uh They didn't know about it. So that's when it really became exciting because we knew we had nostalgia and that would bring eyes to the table. Um, But learning about this, this, this really kind of rock and roll badass network, you know, that shaped everyone's childhood, um, you know, was, was, was awesome. And so it was a, it was a, it was a blast. Very cool. And yeah, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was going to say, I never, I didn't realize that. Ohio claims Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. I never realized the connection yeah. like that. What anyway. don't they have? And once, well, I know. What don't God, they have? What the traffic no lights, Ohio? President I, Taft. There's, <laughs> that's the big three. 
Cincinnati you know? chili. Uh, yeah. yeah. We oh Cincinnati. I, <laughs> I just remember I remember playing a show once in Cleveland and someone coming up to me and being like something about like, you know, someone that they knew that that's helped start Nickelodeon. I was like, no, Nickelodeon started in Canada, dude. I like blew yeah. him off. I was like, I don't know. I don't I don't know what the hell you're selling, pal. I was on Nickelodeon for uh, 89 <laughs> to 2000 respectively, but you know. I was on 11 years. I didn't know nothing about no Cleveland, Ohio. It's crazy, but yeah, it was. So that was one of the things I learned yeah. watching the docs. Us too, because, well, you know. Was it a local station in Cleveland? or It was Columbus, Ohio, and it's actually this crazy invention. Yeah, it was Columbus. That's oh, right. even better. Yeah, even it's better. like a weird invention where, like, it was before pre-cable, and it was called Cube, Q-U-B-E, and it was this weird box that you had that gave you extra channels, but you could also talk back to it. It was like this huge boxy thing where you could like vote <laughs> like it was they had like a thing almost like american idol where you could vote people off or you could like should marijuana be legalized awesome. put push button one for yes button two for no and it's just this i was fascinated by it like we could have motivated the kid vote we could have gotten the kid vote out in massive numbers for turnout this yeah. past uh if we had this cue box this earlier cube yeah it's a crazy thing like it was very fascinating i i've always loved things like that like failed technologies that like didn't make it like Betamax or laser disc or yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And that's kind of, oh. so it's kind of fascinating all this old seventies and eighties footage of this weird invention that, you know, ultimately didn't work out, but they had this one channel on there called pinwheel that they're like, ah, let's just take that and move it to New York. And then, you know, it became what it became. Mm. That's, that was the first show that I watched on Nickelodeon. If I remember pinwheel. correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Pinwheel, pinwheel, spin me spin around. around. Yeah, I remember something that Something and part. something and see what you found. That's that's. I, I had I'm an at. older brother who was seven years older than me, and he hated that. Like, cause I would, I would always jam <laughs> that show, and you know, he's like sixteen. He's like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Oh. Yeah, like stop, <laughs> turn it off. And it's like there's this little stop kid making it uncool in here. <laughs> yeah, at the very end, there's a look. It's like pinwheel, and he's like, that's that. That's what put him over the edge. This little kid going pinwheel. <laughs> He's like, hey, Scott, I'm going to sit you down. We're going to listen to some Iron Maiden now. Yeah, Get this yeah, crap yeah. off of you. And it was, it was double satisfying when we got to show him the movie, and it's like they show the pinwheel part. It's like, <laughs> all these years later, I'm Sweet still redemption. making you watch yeah. pinwheel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Your bro- all these memories come flooding back to your brother. He's like, I can't take it anymore. This is it. I'm instantly transported back to that time. Mm-hmm. He, you better be careful. He's going to be the one yep. guy that knocks you down to a 99%. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 Just yep. fucked up. I'm yep. going to totally look at who that username is. And he's going to be like, <laughs> see Barbara fucking will forever. Yeah. Big bro. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, big bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember the good times. Oh, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But, but we, you know, we, and, and this is, uh, you know, uh, not pandering at all, but the one thing, like the one... Well, we, the, our two favorite shows, definitely, we, you know, we've been asked are like, are you afraid of the dark? And then the adventures of Pete and Pete. And so when we were creating the list of who we wanted, you know, because we did like an A list, B list, C list. Right. Which and what I mean by that is that like the the we had a list of of a cast that would be uh, interviewees that would be enough for us to appropriately tell the story. <laughs> then you know what would be really good and then excellent right which would be like kind of what we ended up having happening fortunately and i remember whenever we did the crowd when we were doing the crowd fund uh we said like specifically that we had to get like you know the like we wanted to focus on pete and pete and i remember i like dressed up like as Artie on halloween because we were doing it at that time so we were like hitting up like toby huss <laughs> and he was just like retweeting or he was like replying you know as Artie and be like not bad boy and we're like <laughs> yeah i know right so we would love to interview he was like he was like sorry i stopped yeah. uh, responding on twitter, of this weird twitter yeah, <laughs> right yeah. exactly right yeah for sure but i mean yeah so it was yeah so we felt really lucky you know to to talk about uh to get to you know speak with y'all and like you said it was it was really cool to yeah. you know with, see at the atx tv fest how that worked out but you know i think that one of the shows that i mean realistically like i think that the two that kind of hold up and i was talking about to my family about it this weekend or are you afraid of the dark because those are just timeless stories right like kids just love to be scared and then the adventures of pete and pete 
right? Because it's not set in terms of holding up. Like it's in this other world, you know, like y'all describe it, right? It's like Twin Peaks meets the Wonder Years. And so I think that it kind of like the best aesthetic also I think about is like almost how Napoleon Dynamite is not in any type of like you can't you can't date it. Right. You can't you really can't tell what decade that. it's mm-hmm. taking place mm-hmm. in. Huh. Right. Yeah. We, so. Except yep. for the except for everybody having mi- middle parted hair. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> that's what when we would tell people we were working on it. That was what I mean, that was always like and again, yeah. not pandering. But that's I mean, as I'm sure you guys are well aware of, it's like everybody it's like oh you're getting you know you're gonna get you know do pete and pete you're gonna get those guys always that's like the first thing people would always ask i i hate to stir well, we're the sorry po- it took so long i feel like we i feel like we we led you we led you down a path of like oh no is this not gonna we save the best get, for last <laughs> oh, okay good 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 i, good, I good, hate good, to stir good. the pot but if you had a kid would you let their best friend next door neighbor climb up to their window in a ladder <sighs> So True. Scott, that's a bit, I mean, that's a, uh, Scott can actually yeah. answer that question. I guess it depends upon where you grew up. You know, I was a yeah. city kid, so it how, just ladders. It, well, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you have the fire escapes really would be what you would do. Doesn't remind yeah. me of <laughs> like, I guess if I, however, which I didn't have a ladder out my window. I, which, uh, Jeremy had to knock yeah, together yeah. Uh, various. For the, for the listener, if you're if if yeah, you're not a Patreon, Patreon to user, see my hand gestures and yeah. he, he made a very dirty yeah. hand gesture. Yeah. I don't think he meant it, but it came across inappropriate. But yeah, the story. Sorry, the, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll 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 let Scott think about this a bit more and answer. Um, sorry, no pressure. Yeah, I, I think personally, I feel like it would be like how well I knew like their family, and you know what I mean. Like if it was someone who was like this kid's basically like a nephew to me, you know, like if it was a neighbor kid or something like that. Hey, I know this kid real well. I'd probably be fine. If it was some, if I opened my kid's door and there was another kid in there that I'd never seen before, uh, that might be a little weird. Be problematic. That'd be problematic. Well, we're not talking about, we're not talking about ladder roulette here where you just randomly put a ladder up to somebody's, up to somebody's window. We're talking about next door yeah, neighbors that disease. might be best yeah, friends or something. That's where the chat were like, uh, chat were like, I got it. Yeah, from. Yeah, like, I can't, I can't like, stop. Hey, he was a bit, he was a big Clarissa <laughs> fan. He's like, well, how can we do this on the internet? I can't stop with my references <laughs> to the previous decade of chat roulette. And <laughs> were, you big, were you big on chat roulette? Mike? I, Negative. I, think- I, fe- I felt like that was just a terrible, horrible idea. I didn't yeah. know what it was. I only saw the South Park making fun of it. And I was like, you know what? I'm, no, no, that's that's I got it. I understand what it is. Yeah, I guess there's a certain kind of cultural weight that comes with being made fun of by South Park, but that's not like the only <laughs> indicators there are. Oh, poor kids had to get chat roulette. You know, we had AOL Instant Men- Messenger, and before that, even just the chat rooms. I remember being in like seventh grade, going into like Star Trek chat rooms, just to be like, "You fucking <laughs> you yes. guys, you did not do that. You did not like, do that. Yes, I absolutely one hundred percent did that. Oh my god, did that. there was did like you have it? Did, did you at least have a metal? Did you at least have like a metal screen name? Sixth and seventh grade. I, no, yeah, my. You know what my screen name was? Danny Eight Ball. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> Really? Well, how stupid wow. was that? Former, yeah, it was former Danny. roadie for Iron Man. Yeah. The reason, no, 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 no. Troll. So in in seventh grade, you have explained my, this before. Oh, I have, but I okay. still like the tell. Oh, I okay. still like I'll the tell telling. You. Thanks, thanks, my. I mean, you've also known me for thirty something fucking years. You probably heard all my stories. From my <laughs> Not life. everyone. Uh, uh, no, I, uh, I. We went to Washington D.C. like that was the class trip from Jersey. They're like, we're day day trip down to. Washington and some guy was selling lighters, Zippo lighters, like straight up, like, Hey guy, you want to buy a, a Zippo? And I, my parents had given me money to like buy, you know, whatever crap I needed. A space buy. shuttle I, from, I from, like, you know from the museum and you got I'm a taking, Zippo. I'm taking this 20 bucks and I'm buying a Zippo. And what's the coolest Zippo you got, pal? And he's like, well, I got this skeleton hand holding an eight ball. And I was like, done. <laughs> you win. And so when I got home, it was when, like, right when I got AOL, and I was like, "What's my name going to be?" And I was like, "Flick, flick, 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 flick." flick, flick. You're like Danny Abel. You're like fuck Jordy. Yeah, just like cut to cut to call cut to college, and I'm getting knocks on my door, being like, "Hey man, hey man, you guys, you get what's with the eight ball?" Are you the guy who talks shit about Star Trek? I don't understand what you mean. People showing up. Yo, you guys want to go skiing? You guys want to go skiing? Yeah, yeah. Too many people showing. Up on three or four tweakers, one Star Trek fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. One, yeah, yeah. One, one Star Trek one, fan, yeah. 
Yeah, we did. <laughs> you go, did. Go ahead, you did. No, no, no. We, yeah, Scott and I that used to always do like we would. We, I mean, we would basically do the equivalent. Like I remember, we spent many years just prank calling people, like all the time. Oh, yeah. We wanted to do the jerky huge. boys, yeah. like real bad. The southern jerky boys, like the 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 jerky y'all. <laughs> the jerky y'all. Uh, the jerky y'all. I don't, jerky I don't have it. I don't have it. I, yeah. The jerky y'all. Caller ID kind of killed that though, because it did. You, yeah. Yeah. Once you, uh, once you, people can't, could know. Can't you disable that somehow? It, you yes. You pound something, and but, you, yeah. But then people were like, "Why is somebody calling me?" They, they blocked yeah. the number. For the listener, but back Jeremy's in the day, not that pounding would still nothing. Be, it would still be a. Mm, <laughs> Maybe I'll pick it up. These yeah. days you're like, ah, no it's way. Just, it's spam. No, yeah. no one's picking well, up. Well, they've gotten like real specific now. It's sort of filtered off into there's there's now entirely just um it pops up, the caller ID pops up as cars extended warranty. <laughs> it's just, just by itself. It was potential <laughs> potential spam, unknown caller, and now cars extended warranty. <laughs> In the early my days, favorite, my favorite, my oh, good, good. You guys go in there. No, no, no. Well, no, I was gonna say, in the early days of the internet, there was a website called dialpad.com, and you could it was Whoa. just like a phone. And dialpad still exists, but it's something different. But it was literally just a phone where you could just call somebody's number, and that was after caller ID had become a big thing. Then, then we started pranking on dialpad because you could oh, just you're calling through the internet, and people didn't even really know yeah. what was going on. So that was kind of fun. You, and you could call like people like across that. the country and just kind of like you know mess with them and there's no way they're gonna find for, you for free for free I'm, I'm for free yeah a lot of pizzas awesome. were wasted back then you know what i mean we talked about mm-hmm. this before too a yeah. lot of pizzas would oh, be prank man. called and just shown up oh, at the gosh. doorstep 10 pizzas i don't have the money for this well <laughs> so i'm gonna just go what to are you gonna do it? with that well, no no i'm not even paying for it but <laughs> you're gonna let that pizza go to waste i'll take it it says your name is danny eight ball delivery for danny eight ball let's, let's make it let's make a trade <laughs> now. it says pizza <laughs> topped with regatta yeah. uh, regat. uh, uh, so if you if there was a uh what was it it was called hooked on phonics do you remember that for me Oh, yeah. Right. And it was one eight hundred A B C D E F G. So that was like any payphone you were around. You're like, all right, guys, because they had to be really nice to mm-hmm. you. We found this out that they were like they would, they would <laughs> keep you on if you legally keep, they were required to make to you keep, read. If if if, <laughs> if you wanted to keep them on the phone, it was very easy. And it would just spend like so much time. Like, what do you want to do? I don't know. Let's go down to the quickie mart and use a payphone and call hooked on phonics. <laughs> you grew up in the Simpsons? <laughs> 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 Or psychics. I I Mart. There's a quickie mart. It's a real. That's a real thing. There's a real quickie mart. Oh, it's Krausner's. We couldn't can't call it quickie mart. I guess. Are you, you needed to anyway. you needed to localize it by saying, "Yeah, I got some Taylor ham yeah. here," and um, <laughs> and so then they knew pork roll. That's right. It's like, yeah, I need you to help me spell Taylor ham. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Oh jeez. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? Oh yeah. The. Uh, Sorry, I've guys, got, you're not going to have clean audio because my son is screaming. I've got ears and a heart, don't <laughs> I? Hey there. The holidays are here, so it's good to know Kroger can save you some time with free pickup on all your fresh favorites. Whether your traditions call for a hearty helping of juicy ham, ample apple pie, or Aunt Sue's legendary twice-stuffed stuffing, Kroger has got you covered. So order for free pickup at Kroger.com or the app and get more time to get your holiday on when you grab your groceries curbside. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. Support for this podcast comes from The First One with DJ Khaled, a new podcast only available on Amazon Music. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Khaled, and this is The First One. We hear from all the A-list music stars like J Balvin, Nas, and Kelly Rowland about songs that didn't change the game, but changed their life. It's almost like sometimes before you even get in the industry, it's like you set up to fail. And there's so many moments where you can win, and the winning is great, but it's so many things that you go through to get to the win. And so much more who tell their stories about the first hits that took them to the next level, changed their life, overlooked to being overbooked. When I was recording the song, I already knew it was going to be a global hit. And I'm not joking, my G. I really felt it inside of me. I was like, I just can't wait to see a number one. Join me every Thursday with the first one drops only on Amazon Music. Let's go. It's funny that you mentioned Taylor Ham because I sent uh, Marla had found something on the internet, which is Scrapple flavored vodka. 
saw that. Oh, Which is, I don't think that exists. Oh, it does. Uh, no, it does. Yeah, unfortunately. There's bacon, fl- there's bacon flavored vodka. Uh, I mean, that's well, a, yes, wow. there is bacon flavored vodka. Called, Jeremy, turn well, the brightness down on your phone if you want me to comprehend. <laughs> Off the hook. Off the hook. That's not bad. That's not okay. Yeah, that's, that's that sounds like something that okay. the Lord would prescribe sounds, against this, this in like, like the, in the second that, Ten Commandments. In eleven through nineteen, yeah. there would definitely be something about Scrapple. <laughs> this seems like a, a an idea that someone who worked at Tito's who got fired was <laughs> yeah. like, "I'm telling you, this, this is, is going to be a good idea." <laughs> this is next. Yeah. <laughs> Traditionally, you know, if you work somewhere, come up with a good idea, then leave and strike out on your own. It, might just happen <laughs> or in the case of you know the, or- the orange orange guy you, have- you just keep doing crack until you figure out that you can put weird stuff in the pillow i noticed i noticed good. that his creepiest commercial got taken off the air which is where he's in the couple's medicine cabinet uh, in the morning and the oh, and the, yeah. the, that one. Oh, yeah. the wife does like <laughs> the fakest the wife does like the fakest you know, the, the husband's like what the heck He's like, hey, honey, come here. And and the wife comes in and she's like, who is that? <laughs> like, it's just, it's just Hi, not believable. Hi, I'm Michael Dell. You buy my pill. He's like, I he, came uh, in he's, the, from the ladder that was over here. <laughs> and you're like, uh, <laughs> it's grown up Sam from Clarissa Explains to the ball. He still can't play guitar. He just, he just hits a button on his phone and it goes, <laughs> it's a little whammy effect. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean. I wonder, there are some people that I would like that we, I would have loved to have talked to. Like I would have, you know, obviously like I said, Toby Huss is like, you should have pranked time. Alex Jones for sure. Oh. You know, if you had given, if you had given Mike and I producer credits, we could have gotten you Toby Huss like that. All you had to do was say something. <laughs> Dang Don't it. Fall for Check it. out my no, website, dialpad.com. You, you, know, you gave it. You gave it all to Elisa Reyes. It's like, yo, you got the, all that people, but you need the P and P people. You should come to us. You, know I mean? <laughs> you, you never know, man. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a roll of the dice. You know, we were all like, it, Iggy Pop. You could have got a Iggy Pop. That would be worth the producer you could credit. Still, listen, uh, you could still get the tried, Snyder. I tried cut. to get Iggy Pop. I just tried to get Iggy Pop for the P and P reunion when we raised money for the Pennsylvania Democrats. Oh, dang and, uh, it. We tried. Yeah. Did he even I respond? Tried. I got, I, I got, no, the, the response was he doesn't do any mm. Zoom stuff, but, the the response also said, but if you could make a video for you, would you do it? And I got I got his contact information and I sent it to Will. I was like, Will McRob, you do yeah. it. You're the yeah. you're the create like I if I'd be like, hey, can I get Diggy Pop to do something for us? He was on a show I was on. I don't know if you remember. I was like, we'll, we'll do it because it sounds way more professional than coming out of my mouth. It's more di- more d- uh, dignified, is what you said. Di- yes, much more dignified, or less be- less creepy and beggy. What, what, vi- what music video was it that like Iggy did a year or two ago that was like uh, where he's eating a hamburger? I forgot what band it was. Was it was it Death Valley what? Girls? Maybe. Um, oh yeah, oh, probably. Yeah. I mean, they I know they have they definitely have connection there that. that yeah. For the listener, Danny just held up two fingers mm-hmm. like Nixon. Oh yeah, there it is. What's going on? <laughs> uh, e- yeah, we saw the, <laughs> Wait, we saw the play nothing, at Meltasia, I believe, Dan. Yeah, right? We saw Death Valley Girls at Meltasia, and uh, uh, Miss Amram was playing bass for them at the time. Uh, back then, but, yeah, they're amazing, man. Like I, I absolutely, I'm sure you know you do more than more than us. Like Miss Live live music like live performances you know i miss live music mm. so very much yeah. so very much i miss playing i miss seeing i miss all of it it's and it's it's stinky and it's weird to see other band like you know like i know bands who are like playing in like south texas right now like so yeah. it's like when i texas, texas isn't necessarily like closed off to live music inside even too really when I want to I mean, recreate I know, like in live San music, Antonio, the, the, yeah, my had a friend's band just went through there and just play. I had like a, a normal show, almost. Wow. like probably less capacity and like people were you know required to wear masks yeah. and stuff. It was still inside. Was your friend the Flaming Lips? No, <laughs> no, but that was, that was a cool thing that they did too. Like, oh hey, yeah, but they were doing buy, those bubble shows 100. before. They were doing those bubble shows before the pandemic hit. Yeah. They were ahead of their time. <laughs> yeah, right. So, well, let me tell when, you something. Was Wayne Coyne in Wuhan in, in November, December? When I want to recreate the feeling yes. of live music, I just find some tall people and stand behind them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Find tall Not people, bad. stand behind them, and just put the phone up. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> I remember I was uh, like for a little while worked at, at uh, iHeartRadio and they would do like the live perform. They would do bring in bands, you know, for live performances, right. For like promos and things like that. And so they would do like the VIP experiences and everybody inevitably in the crowd would just be like this the whole time. I'm, I'm holding up my phone for uh, for for listeners. Yeah, for, the for, the podcast, for the listeners, yeah. you get it for the listeners. Well, five bucks. That's all. That's you all need. you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To see, uh, this. And to see his phone. It's, it's, it really is easy. So we so we would yeah. And and finally, I forgot who it was, but one of the artists stopped in the middle of a song and was like, "Hey, listen, I get it. Right, everything is about like recording everything now to prove that you were there. Just." listen to the music for a second and i promise i'll take a video afterwards with you and i will say you're like the most amazing person in the world please don't i could appreciate yeah, that very yeah. Much. yeah i thought it was great you know and and i anybody who was offended by it it's like well then why do you go to a live music performance yeah it makes no it makes no sense to yeah. me yeah and scott used to be in a band uh, uh for while he recorded some of the music uh on the on the soundtrack which is cool oh awesome. Oh, really? yeah. I did. I, I, me and the animator who did some of the animated segments, we, we recorded this song that's playing when we talk about Artie. Hmm. There was a, I like that. I just, he's really the most cartoonish um, live action Nickelodeon character ever, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Easily, easily rendered by illustrators. Like, you know, we've been lucky enough to get some, some PP tributes over the years. Oh, cool. Um, we did a, a cool thing in Portland with the release of the Waiting for October mm-hmm. tribute that had all this different cool fan art. And I would say that people really seem to have the most fun drawing Artie. He's a lot of fun to draw. Yeah. And that's a that's a credit to Toby, right? Because I mean, who as you can tell, I mean, based upon like the like how long and you know how he continues to be such an amazing actor, it's like it's it's cool to see. I don't know. It's just so cool to see an actor. I mean, because he was doing on MTV also, right? Doing doing commercials and at that time. And mm-hmm. and I remember Scott and I used to like always like we would be drinking like big red and walking around imitating his characters on MTV. And like and now it's like, you know, you uh, see him on Glow and the invitation and Halt and Catch Fire. And you know, it's like yeah, I mean, yeah. just talent. I mean, credit to yeah. to Will and Chris and everybody, man. Like, cause you know, the, the talent it shows there. you. Uh, for finding that kind of talent right, in, yeah. a, it shows in an you off, how, off, 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 <laughs> off, 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 off Broadway play. Yeah. <laughs> but like Adam and I, you know, we, we watched uh, The Adventures of Pete and Pete and we we loved Artie. And then we were also kind of starting to watch MTV. And he was on those bumpers where he was kind of imitating like Frank Sinatra. Yeah, Sinatra doing those weird like yeah. crooner bits and, and, in the elevator. And I remember when we realized it was the same guy. We're like, that's that's Artie. Like, that's crazy because. At first glance, you never would have thought that's the same guy. And it shows you how cartoony and malleable he is. Because Malleable, excellent and, word. And then someone who was like, oh, man, I'm really trying to get this scene in Vegas vacation down. <laughs> yeah. I need somebody that looks like that looks like now, a, I auditioned, a Frank I auditioned for that part. I auditioned for that part for the kids. So that would really? have been a real oh, mind that. blower <laughs> if I had booked the Nick Papa Giorgio uh, role in Vegas vacation. That would oh have been my weird. gosh, that would have been hey, very weird. Hey, I'm I'm Chevy Chase. I keep having kids, but they just they they stay the same age as they were. <laughs> they morph. They morph. They one kid looks like one kid, but they don't really look like the same kid. It's the Dick York, Dick Sergeant thing. Yeah. It's like they Sergeant York. expect people, they expect people not to know. And they, they always cast the Aunt Viv, the Aunt Viv thing the Aunt for, Viv. for the oh, 90s yeah. kids. Very good. Very, very, very good. 90s kids. Yeah, very they nice always play. got a similar looking guy to play Russ, right? Like it was always like red hair, kind of tall, thin, until the very end where they got Johnny <laughs> Galecki, who's like younger <laughs> and uh, I met I Michael met all the requirements. I read all the requirements to be selected, to be selected, but I wasn't. Uh, well, who's on you know, who's on your shirt, by the way, Mike? Uh, this is a character called um, Ginger Vitus <laughs> from a. Oh uh, my gosh! An artist that we met in uh, in LA called I think the artist's name is Robo Roku. He looks so happy, like in spite Ginger of Vitus. in spite of the yeah. the mouth issues. In spite of the yeah, the mouth problems. Yeah. <laughs> he's it's about weird. he's about ten to twenty days back on election results, so he's still quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. That's crazy. Like I didn't. Is there? What are some other? I mean, you know, what what are some other like 
uh, auditions where you're like, man, like I wish that I would have nailed that. Ooh. I got a big, I got a big one. Before you answer though, I've been wanting to do this for years, which is I want to have them. I want to recast the movie and just play the snippets of them. You don't ask the questions. We ask the questions. <laughs> no. And, and then I appreciate it, Adam. Go for yeah, it. And then do a web series of them doing these roles over. I'm just saying could be, could be something well, fun. I'm telling you, I would have crushed free. Willy. That's what I'm saying. Could you imagine <sighs> DT under the whale? And I would have crushed well, the DT I would have, in I would under have, the way. I would have crushed the bad, <laughs> the the bad kid, Macaulay Culkin's character in The Good Son. Oh man, would have, that would have been a good. <laughs> Alfie yeah, agrees that you were a, you agree with, you're a terrible you're sibling. Sibling. Look at this guy. That's you came in right on cue. You're not going to be throwing stuff off of you know, uh, when off of an overpass to scare <laughs> and then cause an accident that kills people, right? Lordy Lord. When we interviewed Michael for the Orange Ears, we asked him who is a better little brother, uh, Kevin from Home Alone oh, wow. or Little Pete. That is a tough and, one. And, and oh, we're not gonna and we're not gonna spoil it here today, is what you're saying, because well, didn't make anything could happen. It didn't make the cut, I it, guess. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I mean, it didn't make the cut, but uh, but yeah, I mean, well, I think that I, I, it. I would. Can you answer that question right now, honestly, Mike? This would be. This is important. This is really I'm, important. I'm glad you asked. One of the favorite roles that I auditioned for but didn't get was <laughs> Dodge. <laughs> Oh. Are you saying Thank no, you, dude. Alfie. Alfie, you're it's saving me. It's bath time, bud. Um oh boy. I guess I guess we had a lot more adventures, whereas uh my character Jeff's relationship with Macaulay Culkin's Kevin character was much more arm's length, as it were. Um, True. most yeah, of we were, the we most actually- of the relationships. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, there's a, but there's obviously a cinematic world, a cinematic, a, a Home Alone cinematic universe, which has some backstory. It's just there's not that much flashback storytelling in that one, as opposed to the Pete, Pete cinematic world where we sort of build. We had a lot of time to world build, both in sixty second and half hour increments. Yeah, I, that, I think I think that sums it up nicely, well, Michael. Kind of. He didn't pick a side, but yes. <laughs> Oh, I know he's picking me. Yeah. And we've tried to get Macaulay Culkin on this podcast plenty of times. And Jeremy's like, stirring the pot. You know what? I don't need it. I don't need him. Get him out of here. I like I like I like my I like my fake TV brother better than my fake movie brother. Jeremy stirring the pot. Uh, that's what he does. It's what he does here at Seltzer King Studios, shaking it up and seeing where the bubbles are. Well, the, the, joke, <laughs> the joke on the, the live tours are that they are here uh so you can enjoy your nostalgic uh, past. I am here to destroy that <laughs> and to make fun of that. So yeah, that's. Kind I thought of, you were here to to yeah. finally watch the episodes of Pete and Pete and catch up with the stuff you know nothing days, about. Man. One of these days, I'm going to finish them all. I know it's weird. Danny it? has muted his son. How does that work? Uh, I, we had a button installed when Gerard was born, oh. but it's I'm it's, it's not mess. working. I'm trying to help the audio here. Working. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. It's, it's his, uh... Did y'all ever read uh, like the speaking of the the Good Son? Did y'all ever watch the movie or read the read the book uh, The Bad Seed? Yes, I've seen the black and white The Bad yeah. Seed, but I also saw the good. I also like most of '90s America saw The Good Son and watched in horror. Mm. Yeah, when you say, like, "Oh, that's a good little kid." That was like He's not so good. That was pro- that was like the most against. That was like a, the most against type, right? Like he was like Kevin McAllister, and then he was like, "No, we got to go the exact I think, opposite way." I think he's got to. I think right. he's got to stop. Think about that. it. What a little Pete! That would have yes. been a perfect segue for me. But you know, whatever. I only he's got to top that by starring in a remake of Night of the Hunter. Mm. That's really <laughs> the sort of the depth of character that he could. Uh, Come on, Dan. No. You're gonna get knuckle be, tats any. You're gonna get knuckle main, tats any day now. I would prefer to be in the reboot of Battle Royale as like the the, the main guy who like the one who sets, lives sets up. Yeah, the one who sets up all the no sets up all the craziness. Uh, something that I read something for you that, aspire to, guys. You got everybody's gonna have something, right? Something that I read for but didn't get. This is not like a well known film, but it was on my mind at the time. Was a. F- a feature that I auditioned for the lead of, uh, but ended up driving the electric truck on and started my electric uh, lighting career was a feature called Six Ways to Sunday, hmm. which is um, it's a movie about 
the mob in Youngstown, Ohio, in the Mahoning Valley. And the title role was played by Norman Reedus. Oh, yeah. Who uh, looked exactly the same that day as he does today. He exists um, now on Fan Youth. <laughs> it has maintained him perfect and maintained him perfectly since then. But I, I knew a bunch of the people involved, and it was uh, it was something that we shot in 1997, so not not too long after Pete and Pete was done. And uh, a lot of the crew from Pete and Pete moved over to that film, and so it was a really nice um, something that. I'm very happy with what happened, but I also could have, I I also might could have uh, enjoyed that role if uh, if it were to happen that way. Well, you, you were on the job. You could have like you know, put some uh, put some grease under his feet. Or- Mike, we Mike, all got Mike the whole- five different takes of, over the course of shooting just to like by just doing be- just, better just line like, readings. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Hey, I had another yeah. line reading. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the entire electric department got ear infections during that Ooh, during that job wow. through no through no fault of Norman Reedus. So uh, or it's weird. That's why they they you're supposed to wear gloves when you're handling all the wires because then if you don't, you just like stick your finger in your ear and then everybody gets an ear infection. I learned a lot of stuff on that job. Um, <laughs> I learned I didn't like Adrian Brody. I, <sighs> that character, he had just an insufferable character. Jeremy, you're shaking your head. I did a film. Yeah, I did you, a film with have, Adrian Brody. He was come on. You got to have an anecdote. I don't know. I mean, he was better than well. The director on the job overtook everybody. He's the guy who made uh, American History X, and he's just an insane man. He, he's completely insane. But uh, strong personalities got to have. Yeah, them. he had a. I guess you won't, you won't be on one of his film sets anytime uh, don't care. soon. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I've, I've sworn it off, and and I, Adrian sort of got caught up in the mix. But Danny and I went to the premiere of uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier, one of those, because uh, my buddy Anthony was was in it. Time cop. Uh, no. And oddly enough, I'm at the bar and who walks in Adrian Brody and I say, hello, how are you? And it was just fine. So I think, I think our, you know, there's no beef there. It's just the Turo, John Turturro that we, uh, our mortal enemies. So that we agree yeah. on yeah. John so. Turturro, John Turturro. Yeah. He's kind of an asshole. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just yeah. spread that around. Scott, as, Adam, as, Scott, Adam, as, do you have talk- any do you have any bridges you'd like to burn? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> these the guys, listen, the these guys don't want to make more documentaries. Let's not fuck yeah, this up true. for them. That's true. Let's, like, no, let's we, not preclude. Let's not preclude on any interviews they might get in the future. Like, no, that's we, right. We, I, I mean, realistically, like everybody on the dock, and like, I mean, everybody, like that was one of the things that was really because you know, like we've we've had the good fortune to to do interviews before with with other talent and you know you kind of almost ex- expect there maybe to be someone that might be challenging right and yeah. nobody i mean nobody was right like everybody was so was so kind and even you know even a perfect example is like us talking today right like is that y'all are y'all are kind enough to just reach out to us and like show support it's you, you, it's just, you don't get that. That just, and y'all know that better than anyone, right? You know, it better than, than me and Scott, that does not always happen. Right. Because in yeah. entertainment and anywhere there are, Hey, what can you do for me? I <laughs> yep. can do something for you unless yeah. you want to do something I, for me. I hope that's changing. I'm trying to explain, that. Yeah. I'm trying that. To explain that to my son right now. It's really <laughs> tough to get that logic in his head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, you're just like, you, I mean, it's, and, and to a degree, you know, the, and we were very lucky because, this being our first feature film, if anyone could have said, we have no idea who you are, right? Yeah. Like, and we don't know whether it's going to be any good. And there are plenty of people. I mean, we had experiences where it, there was one one person that we like that was a, a member. So that was on one of the shows as an extra, right? And had been reaching out to us and uh, was like, hey, we would really, I'd really be interested. I was this one part, this and this. And we we're like, okay, well, maybe, you know, we'll see what we can do, whatever. And became very like, um, like, I mean, somehow actually kind of like for a little bit took over the IMDb and put himself like as the top, as the star, <laughs> like yeah. the top thing, Uh-oh. which was tough. And so I remember us going and speaking to one, to one uh, actor when we were doing interviews and we were like, yeah, you know, thank you so much for taking the time and this and this. And we were like, and and they asked if we had had, you know, they're like, have you had any like 
strange occurrences or whatever. We were like, well, we did have this one person and it turned out to be the same person. And they were like, yeah, like they message us all the time and X, X and X. So with that said, you know, like y'all have these experiences all the time. So for you to give us that, you know, to give us that grace uh, to say, okay, yes, like, you know, we'll, we'll give you all a shot to do this, you know, to be in this film. Uh, it means a lot. Well, it was a, just a great idea. And it was, you know, I know it changed my life for the better and just in general, like the, we were glad you we were, were untainted all, uh, by the, uh, you know, previous Nickelodeon documentary <laughs> cra- crashes and burning. So yeah. you guys were um, emerging. <laughs> You know, if, was, if you were just if you were just doing a whole thing on on the Nick Studios, what happened to it? You know, there, there's a lot of people that were like, "Hey, I need to know your hot take on. Do you miss it? Do you?" And I was like, "I don't know, really on time. I mean, I did some shows there. Yeah, it wasn't like wasn't like all that. I wasn't on all that when it was there. Like, I wasn't doing a ton of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, just you." you Watching that film with Jerry and and everyone when we did that event in New York was just such a great, fun moment. And the people who were in the audience were just so incredibly like thankful for what you guys did. And and you know watching it was really it was really good. I mean, if I watched it, it was like ah, they didn't do such a good job. Maybe we wouldn't be talking right now. That's what I'm saying. So it did it's, a te- it's, a it's a testament, testament. to yes, your talents. Very good. Very good. Very well, good. Well, it says a lot about yeah. Jerry also. And, and, you know, Scott, I mean, uh, Scott said this in a couple of interviews, right? Is whenever it ta- one that Jerry like threw a party for everybody to invite us. But two, like Scott has said, when it comes to like anything that, you know, like you said, hot takes or anybody, it's like, oh, well, tell the CD underbelly. It's like there's TMZ, right? You guys can go Google and like look at stuff like that if you're really interested. And that's not what the. I don't know. That's not what we need right now. I don't think, and that's not what the what this story is about. No. And there's an, honestly, there wasn't a lot of it. Yeah, I really feel mm-hmm. like that that time, right. and I'm sure now it's the same way. Like Nickelodeon is a great they they have they hire good people. They have right. a lot of for the most part. For the most part, yes. I can I can <laughs> think of an exception that we're all thinking of right now. I understand, but yeah. For the the most part, oh, yeah, we're talking really about Jeremy, care. right? They really they they did. They really cared about the kids, and they cared about like make keeping keeping people protected and safe, and not you know. Yeah, we we thought that was something really cool to showcase. Is like whatever the opposite of a toxic environment is. That's what she created, and how amazing that is. And hopefully, that can inspire yeah. other leaders to do something similar. Well, that's what happens when you don't pick kids to be on tv shows to brand them for a network to do that like yeah. there weren't pete and pete lunch boxes there weren't you know it wasn't like that we weren't singing and dancing and being in film we were just kids doing fun stuff and i think that was the real difference between us and other children's networks that were oh yeah no we have this and they and and we'll piggyback them into this and to do this so they can have this career but they're also under this uh, you know it's like let the kids be kids, man, and, and yeah. have fun. You'll get good quality content that was produced from, you know, 89 to 98, 99, whatever. Yeah. Jerry it's left. like what Onyx said. They said, slam. Let the kids be kids. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Very good. What, what a Danny, great way to wrap it up. <laughs> what a great way. A little Onyx, a little 90s hip hop. Come on. Okay. Could get, very good. Could, very can't good. get any better than that. Uh, Scott and Adam, uh, I know the it's out, uh, the documentary is out on the video on demand, right? Uh, is there anything is, else yeah. you guys want to plug uh, before we take off? Or no, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's on it's on pretty much all the transactional platforms right now: iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, Fandango. <laughs> like it's it's pretty much Fandango. 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 Uh, I thought that was somewhere where you bought movie tickets, but I yeah, guess maybe I they've shifted. There's also it's also on Redbox, which is a digital thing now too. Uh, so it's oh. it's pretty much uh, everywhere you could want it. And you know, we had a lot of fun making it, and we were so thankful for all the amazing Nickelodeon actors and creators giving us the time to to really give us thoughtful, amazing interviews. So uh, you know, we had fun making it. We hope people have fun watching it. Very nice. I can't wait. 
Yeah, and we're also working wait. on getting on chat ladder and chat roulette. So yes, we will. Okay, yes, yeah. nice. yes. So okay, don't cool. under don't undercount any very other cool. video on yeah. demand platforms. He's so funny, just like Scott and that. You just like pop up and you just have like a little computer and oh, you're, yes. you're <laughs> streaming and you're like, no, you have to watch this. I just think of how I like that. Just think of I think that's perfect. That's a perfect grassroots way to spread your documentary. <laughs> yeah, and also get yourself killed, particularly in. A, 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 a carry state like Texas, probably. <laughs> open, open carry. I played. Op, I played open carry chat Russian roulette. Oh. Let's just be glad that we live uh, in a world where 4K is the thing now and not then. Not because then. Yes. 4K oh my god. Of chat roulette would not be pretty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's oh, take it home. We're part of the last podcast network. That's what we uh, are. Part of the last podcast network. Check us out. Yes. Lastpodcastnetwork.com. A lot of good shows on there. Uh, also, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Dania Mike with the end spelled out. Uh, episode with the videos, end spelled out. Just like this if one. You have, if you have we'll questions, let us know at 347-470-8150. You can find uh, Leave us a voicemail. Michael C. at Michael C. Morona on the Twitter. Danny's at Danny Tamborelli on the Insta, at D. Tamborelli on the Twitters. I am at Remy Balin on most things, at Jeremy Balin on the Instagram. I have a podcast called Going Dork. Check that out. And... What else, folks? What did I forget? Oh, the orange years. The orange years. Yes. Please go rent it. Please. Even better, go buy it. Uh, Give it. G- keep it one hundred Roddies because that's a that's a that's a record. Yeah. We don't want to fuck up, and we know that some people are hitting refresh on the browser. And if so. you know if you know Scott Barber's brother, tell him don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's don't barber. Don't do it, bro. Please. If, <laughs> don't Scott's, do it, bro. Scott's barber uh, has been told don't do it for at least a year now. I'm thinking with that length of hair. Yes. Uh, this is about this is like a good um 10, 11 months on me. So me too. Full year, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I cut I cut it. I cut it in July and I felt bad about it after it's like my quarantine cred is gone. Show your show your kid has some very long hair though. Yeah, he does. Oh, okay, but all right, yeah. it's just, it's, you're ready for that time. I understand. Look at all this moozy on your face, bud. Cool. I think Alfie's Ooh. ready for uh, what do you call? It? Oh yeah, he's he's totally '90s with that hair. That's he cool. likes the mute button on my on my microphone. He's like, "That's cool." Tell, tell now you it's the truth. Blinking. So do we. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Thank you thank so you much. So much. Thank y'all. Um, well, well, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Adam Scott. We always Adam Scott was on this. <laughs> he, he was Dick Sargent, Dick York. We'll see you next time Adam for the Scott. Snyder Cut. <laughs> Thank I'll you check guys. You out later. All right. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. The Adventures of Danny and Mike stars Danny Tamborelli and Michael C. Maruna. The show is produced by me, Jeremy Bailey. This podcast is part of the Last Podcast Network, which can be found at lastpodcastnetwork.com. Make sure to check that out for a ton of great shows. For more information on the guys, visit our website at dannyandmike.com. Also look us up on Twitter at Danny and Mike with the N spelled out and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Adventures of Danny and Mike. Thanks for listening. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to LastPodcastNetwork.com.